is upon us. All over Britain, people are dancing to a different tune. Tonight on All Black, we take you into the underworld of jungle. Jungle is a London something, and a London something this. The scale of this scene is gigantic. When you hear jungle music, the beats there, but it's alive, and the bass line just holds you. I think it's very sexual music. I heard the beat and it was like, yeah, I was getting back to my roots. It's just showing life on the streets. I mean, America got hip hop, Jamaica there got their ragga, we got jungle, simple. Jungle has been called the sound of urban Britain. It takes dance music back to its black roots. It emerged in the late 80s as a breakaway from the rave scene when DJs started experimenting with black sounds. Until then, rave music attracted a largely white audience, but Jungle's rhythms and bass lines appealed to black youth. This man is one of the Mr. Biggs in Jungle, whose label, Kickin' Records, has produced six albums. He remembers the opposition that DJs originally faced. Certain faction of the rave scene started to dance with more break beat with the ragga samples and certain people, some of the white boys would say, yeah, I'm not dancing this jungle bunny music. So it, was a, it created a kind of a split really and when Smiley and PJ really said in the early, early part of the 90s saying, well, look, we feel jungle is an insult to black people. They were right, but it's kind of backfired because jungle is now becoming a big thing. In the last year, Jungle has grown from a small, exclusive underground scene to the main sound on the streets. Over the summer, as many as 20,000 people were raving to Jungle every weekend. In London, major West End clubs now feature Jungle. Even Radio 1 has begun to play it. MC Lenny's job is to work up the crowd at the raves. He says Jungle gets people moving by sampling the old records that everyone loves and mixing them in with fast dance beats. Jungle's about samples, believe me. It's about the samples of the reggae artists what are in the music. I'm going to show you a thing about Bujo Banton. It's on Jungle Hits Volume 1, so listen. And it doesn't have to be just ragga, just reggae. It can also be soul. Listen. As you can see, this is the sound of Anita Baker. This is soul. Just giving you a taste that it's not about anything else, it's about the samples, whether soul, whether reggae, is still black influenced. That's why the boys are onto this lift here. In this scene, the DJs are also producers and musicians. Fabio and LTJ Bookham were amongst the earliest creators of Jungle. They say it has certain distinctive trademarks. Well, I think it was just like a blend of um, reggae bass lines, you know. It was just, it's a bass, it's a bass thing, really. It comes off the bass line. You see, that's the difference between jungle and techno. And techno is kind of like high frequencies, and jungle is low frequencies, like really heavy bass, exaggerated bass. But that's, I think it's just coming from soul, reggae, all kind of forms of black. It's got touch. It's all, everyone's like inspirations, isn't it? And yeah. It's mingled up and and even jazz like because it's, yeah. it's, it's quite freestyle as well. But the thing that makes it different from a lot of other music is the speed. It's just a lot faster. Affordable computers have opened up music making to a new generation and revolutionised the creative process. If you take the emergence of computer technology, particularly the Atari, around 1990 onwards, um, it provided an opportunity for a lot of urban youngsters 
black and white to actually inform the music with their own their own sampling with their own experiences um, and to make the music a bit more relevant to what they wanted to hear and what they were feeling you know the computer technology just created a whole generation of bedroom junglists technology's been the most important thing because without people being able to go out and just spend a grand, a couple of grand on a computer and a sampler, then they couldn't lay, there's no other way of laying down the music. You've got, you got to go into sort of a big studio or do this and do that. So technology's been the main sort of reason why people can go out and do what they're doing now. A lazy Sunday afternoon in North London and a young computer genius is working at home. What about the bumper part? But this is it as a separate mix on the, on the recording? Andre and his friend Rodney, also known as Shy FX and MC Gunsmoke, are busy composing a new tune in Shy's bedroom. As Gunsmoke's voice is recorded on his sister's tape deck, Shy samples the beats on his computer. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Wicked. Hey, hey, original. You know that. Part two. What is this? Part two, shy. Shy, a trainee studio engineer and student gunsmoke, use their every free moment to finish their single Gangster 2. In a month's time, they'll be performing it live. Do you like it? Wicked. It's important for me to have them quick in my bedroom because you get all your ideas, you know what I mean? You don't, have to, you don't get your ideas and forget it by the time you go to the studio. You know, you can put it down roughly. About 40% of the work is done here. No, I mean, I just get a rough structure of what the program's going to be, what the idea of the tune is and everything. Usually I program the drums on the computer here, put a bass line or whatever, and then the rest of it's in the studio. Shy and Gunsmoke said the violent lyrics in Gangster were inspired by a real-life incident. Gangster came about because we were hearing a lot of tunes that um, are sampling of films and the rest of it, yeah. And I, I was thinking, well, boy, you know, we should do something more original than that. You know what I mean? Get some London talks so everybody can relate to it still. You know what I mean? So me and my brethren, just, we started the introduction and everything. Then we just built the tune around it. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? Shut up. Don't ask me that, man. Don't kill you, man. Some boy was running another boy, whatever, and his friend was telling about it in a car. They see the boy that was running him. So they get out of the car, <laughs> kill him basically, jump back into the car and go about their business. Instances like that do happen, mate, not usually with a gun or something, but instances like that do happen, that's why you put it in there in the first place, you know what I mean? So everybody knows what we're talking about. These things are happening still. Maybe not that extreme, but <laughs> things are happening. Gangster Jungle is often criticised for glamorising violence, but not everyone agrees. If it's a reflection on the reality which an individual seeks to portray through his or her music, then I cannot see how it can be a negative thing. They feed a mainstream, predominantly white fantasy about the lifestyles and the primary definers of blackness in Britain, the way in which um, young black men are seen to be running wild. And if, by feeding into this fantasy, artists embracing the, the so-called gangster ray genre can make money, then that is deeply subversive. Rebellion. True rebellion. Jungle is about um, making music that adults hate and kids love. It's like, it's like the old rock and roll story, you know, it's like, if it's loud, I hate it. So I, I think personally that Jungle is popular because the youths, the youths can let off on it. It's like, a, it's, 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 it's an escape from their, their kind of society and environment. So, you know, anybody over 25, watch out.